these group are panicking, screaming. But if you panic in the water, you're going to drown. Shark! Oh, my God, man, that was nuts. There is so much pressure for Kerbox to do this. I don't think I've ever been so scared in my whole life. And when we pulled up, I just seen their facial expressions were just like they'd been defeated. Looks like we've got a deceased one. I knew that this person wasn't going to be alive. Pretty likely if you're lifeguard for some period of time that you will encounter a dead body. Body trivials are never easy, you know, and, and every lifeguard deals with them differently. It's a pretty emotional sort of thing, but you've got to try and block them out so you can think straight and carry out the job as smoothly as you can. Dealing with dead bodies is confronting. It's not a nice, glamorous part of the job. No one likes it. Sometimes you just got to do it. We actually patrol three beaches. You've got Bondi, and then you've also got Tamarama and Bronte, just a little bit further south. Yeah, uh, Bondi's Bronte. We're in the tower, and we get a call from Bronte over the radio. Go ahead, Bronte. This is Bondi. Could you get the jet ski over here? we got someone right out the back of the pool, and we're not sure what's going on, but there's someone trying to drag someone on a board. Jesse's heading out on a, on a rescue board, but let's grab the jet ski just in case. Just tell us, uh, we'll start watching and we're waiting for the first We're prepping the jet ski to take over to Bronny, but there's not a lot of information at this stage. Can I go with you? I'm, I'm really sticking to go with him because as a trainee, you want to you wanna get everything done, you want to tick all the boxes. Then he just noticed the guy run out there and he's waving. There's someone on the board trying to get him on the board, so it's pretty, uh, could be a recess, we're not sure yet. Johnny, could you see that signal that Jesse just gave you then? Give him the resource signal, mate. We got them. I'm down on the water's edge with a... with a deep bib and oxy on a board. Yeah, copy. We're closely monitoring the radio, and Jesse's just given the three pulls of the chain. Get help. Get back up. Ring the ambulance. Get everyone down here because we're in a very bad situation. So as soon as we hear that, we've got to act accordingly and that's when we made the decision to step Taco aside and take a more experienced lifeguard in Kobe. Taco, you can't come. At that point, I was a bit, oh, not too happy that I got brushed off a bit, but I guess it, as, it's do, as it's doing it for the good of me. The last reports are that we've got an unconscious patient in the water, so the quicker we get there, the better off we are. It's two k's to Bronny, and we're going to have to fly to get there. Our boys are, uh, mate, they're halfway to um, Mackenzie's point on the jetty. Uh, the two Graham brothers are going to be arriving, so, uh, yeah, mate, uh, that's it so far. So we've just come around the point at Tamarama. We've gone flat steer, got Kobe on the back. We're bouncing over troughs. We still don't know at this stage if the patient's dead or alive. As we approached Bronny, I could see the boys waving, and we, we gradually eased off on the throttle. And, and when we pulled up, I just seen the look on their face. Their facial expressions were just like they'd been defeated. I knew that this person wasn't going to be alive. Yeah, just going to put on central. Looks like we've got a deceased one, but we're going to bring him in. That's it. When their call came in describing the state of the body, I was just like, oh gosh, thank God I didn't go. All his face is bleeding really bad, too. Body trivials are never easy, you know, and so it's not a rush. I tried to settle all the boys, I just said, okay. You know, we had to make a call. We weren't going to work on this patient because he was obviously been in the water for a long time. Fortunately enough, Robbo, the oldest lifeguard amongst us, made the decision to grab the body and bring it up onto the mat, and Kobe gave him a hand, and it wasn't a pleasant sight. Jet ski to, uh, to Bronny. Guys, can you organise a towel or something? We're going to have to cover the patient up. We bring him in. Yeah, you know, it's a pretty emotional sort of thing, but you've got to try and block them out so you can think straight and, and carry out the job as, as smoothly as you can. Uh, that's a, a dark 
dark into a beautiful day. Yeah, he's naked as well. Oh, he's got rigor he's pretty stiff, so he might have been there for a while. The first person to come across the body was a young clubby from Bronte, Diego. I saw the body floating in the water. I started waiting for you guys here, but I couldn't see anyone, so I decided to put him on my board. I was just thinking about his family, his mom, his dad. Yes, it's pretty bad. It wasn't a good sight, but this is what, what, what comes with our job sometimes. We've got to do stuff like that. Like around. When we got back to the to the beach at Bondi, Taco was there to give us a hand to wheel the, the jet ski up the beach. You didn't miss, 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 miss stuff you don't want to be exposed to. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, I've missed something major. You haven't missed anything, mate. It's not something you want to go to. You know, if you can avoid it, you want to avoid it, you don't want to. It's been two days since the body retrieval, so we're just getting together as a group and just going to have a discussion and see how everyone's feeling after it and how everyone's travelling. It's a bit hard to sleep last night, actually, to be honest. Ready to come in, guys? We were watching the water and I was like, this can't come from here because yeah. we've been, we've had our eyes on the water. So I was kind of like, what was going on? And then when I got to that bit where I was like, yeah, 50 metres away and I'd just seen the body, I was just like, oh, here we go again, you know. We didn't take it too serious at the start, but as the sort of time went on, the, the, the nature of the call got a bit more serious. It went from a uh, person in distress, you know, a possible unconscious patient, and then then we knew we were on there. Me and Kobe just jumped on the ski and just gunned it. Jesse got there, then Robbo got there, Max got there, and we all got there, and we all just realised at the same time, went, this guy's dead. Robbo, you jumped on top of him, Kobe held on to him, Jesse, you it helped calm the blood. So everyone had a little role to make the retrieval, you know, successful, if that makes sense. Yeah. It's yeah. good how we back each other up like that. It's different too, you know, like you do a recess and you like, especially for successful, you get a good buzz out of it. But you drop the body off and hand it over to the police and you just get to the beach and you just got this numb feeling like you don't get any success mm. out of it. But what well, Jesse made a comment to the bloke, there's a, probably a good chance that maybe the family would never maybe find the you know, the guy again, if if he didn't grab him yeah. or, you know, so I think that's more of a success where the family could bring closure, you know, have a funeral for, for him. It's always good to know that you've got your mates there to support you. People panic in all sorts of situations. But if you panic in the water, you're going to drown. On the edge, make sure you stay close to shore. Especially if you're not very confident or a non swimmer. I'm watching these people in the flags. These group are panicking, screaming. And there's people in arm shot of them standing on the sandbank. When I first jumped on the board and paddled out, it was just one guy I was really particularly going for. But that changed really quickly. Look at all the arms going up. Oh, wow. Right, those... Oh, they're all gone. Hey. I see the fourth guy, and he's having a good old drink of the Pacific. Take me back to the sweet times, the hot nights. Everything is going to be all right. In the summertime, baby, in the summertime, that is where I'll be. Paddling out, there's three guys now who are in heaps of trouble. As I'm swimming to the fourth guy, it goes through your mind every time doing a rescue without a board or a tube. It can be a struggle. They can try to drown you. It's trying to stay cool and trust your own ability. Where's Maxi? Where's Maxi? Get out of the water. Go 
Yeah, straight in, brother. Pretty much, that was panic in its, in its finest form. They could have gone a couple of metres either way, but they panicked, lost their cool, and, and pretty much almost drowned. One, the guy at the back was genuinely in trouble. Like, he needed help, and the three were just um, standing there with their arms up, waving for help. It, it doesn't matter how good a swimmer you are or how bad you are, just don't panic. The rule of thumb is just stay calm and stay alive. Mate, that was horrendous, then. Had to fully ditch the board to pull up some like drowning. Biggest fear as a lifeguard would have to be losing a kid while on duty. And it's all your fault. I'm not scared of rats, I'm not scared of spiders. I'm scared of the, the ultimate swell. Every lifeguard has their own individual fears, but there's one thing that we're all afraid of. Swimmers think about it. Surfers definitely think about it. And us lifeguards always have that little bit of a worry every time we go in the water. The last shark attack at Bondi was only a couple of years ago, and it was a great white. You know, as lifeguards, we really are intrigued by those creatures in the water and really want to see them. Lead the charge. I'm oh, leading that. Two oh, a leader. Two a lead. Look at him. Jump on board, In the pre-season, we went down to Port Lincoln in South Australia to conquer all our fears and swim with the man-eaters, the great whites. Hey, mate, how are you doing? Yeah, good. Sam. Nice to meet you. Oh! So scared right now. Oi, don't worry. Oi, you look, look at cages. Cage is massive. There are holes in the thing. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been so scared in my whole life. I didn't think it was going to be this daunting, but now we're starting to move. It's a reality that we're going to see some sharks. I'm terrified. I was a pro surf for about 10 years. During that time, I saw maybe 20 odd sharks. Without a doubt, it's a surfer's greatest fear. I don't know if I can get in the cage. <laughs> oh, what am I doing? So much pressure for Kerbox to do this. If he pulls out now, he'll never hear the end of it. Oh. Ah. Took around two hours to get out to the Neptune Islands where the Great Whites were. And yeah, once we got out there, we just anchored up and bowled up. It looks tasty. Now have a look over the side. Yeah, it's just a shashimi. You see it pumping over. Oh. You are right, King? Look at this maniac over here. There's one down deep, he's a little bit shy. Might be enough to bring him up, you know. Thrash and seal, something injured, bit of noise. Kerbox hasn't moved an inch in the last half an hour. You know, he can't stop looking at the water. <laughs> what have I got myself in for here? I was kind of hoping we didn't get to see one, actually. <laughs> that all soon changed. <laughs> Shark? Holy sh! Oh, oh, are you kidding me? Oh, oh, the size God. of that thing. Oh my God, man, that was nuts. Look at us now. There is a massive great white under the boat. Man. He's huge. Oh. I've never seen anything like it. It was nearly as white as a car. Here, sharky, sharky, sharky. As soon as I seen it, I was just so psyched to get in there, but I think the older boys were a bit more scared than me and Maxie. Well, we've got to get in there, box. Oh, <laughs> they set about four and a half metres. Oh, I, can't, <laughs> I can't go in. Kerbox has come this far. I hope he can take the final step and get down in the cage. Ready to go, boys? Yeah, ready. Yep, now, let's do it. Now, there's a couple of shark screws around. The biggest one would be close on five metres. How would you feel if that showed up at Bondi? I was trying to act brave in front of the boys because I didn't want to let them know I was petrified. I kind of think they already knew that anyway. <laughs> Don't miss the cage box. We're not going in over there. Just go forward, box. We don't actually go in. Yeah, everyone was nervous, but for me, it was pretty much my greatest fear. 
I remember getting in, I couldn't feel my legs, and I was getting so anxious and so uptight in there. I had a bit of a spew in the regulator. <laughs> Mate, I was shit myself. You just can't believe how big these things are. It's a real mix of emotions. You're really excited, but you're really nervous and scared too. I just thought to myself, what am I doing in this cage? Like, I'm out of here. I, I wanted to get out right there and then, but unfortunately, I couldn't let Hoppo right behind me. Originally, I wanted to touch the shark as it sort of went past, but uh, that, that thought moved from my mind pretty quickly when we are in the water and saw the, saw the beast live in action. We were down there for 60, 75 minutes, and it was intense, but it was beautiful, and I'll never, ever forget it. <laughs> that was mental. That's real hard. All the time, mate, all the time. Something that I've hopefully never experienced when I'm not in a cage, but, mate, had a ball, unreal. What have I learned about great whites? Stay as far away as you can from their mouth. Their teeth look razor sharp. <laughs> the whole idea to go there was trying to cure my fear of sharks, especially being involved here with work. But I'm on the complete opposite now. I just know they're in the ocean now. It's made me worse. <laughs> Just around the corner from Bondi at Bronte, we've been called for a dangerous threat. A big shark in the pool. We've got a predator amongst us. I've got to get it out. I'm going to go down and I'm going to remove the shark. I'm a shark hunter. It's alive. This is a rescue mission, everyone. I thought it was what, we're... Now, I feel like what we're here for. Oh we... my God. Lifeguards don't just save lives, all right? That's not just humans. We help the animals too, you know? The shark... Yeah, he's an oddball, Harry. He's the, um... You know, he can talk to the kids on the same level. He's, he's pretty out there. When I dove under and seen the shark, he could have dived straight into my hairstyle. <laughs> I could tell that everyone started to actually enjoy what I was up to. You know, I went from that entertainer to the shark hunter, from the shark hunter to the tadpole catcher. Oh, he's got his out. There was a baby wobby gong. It wasn't known as a man eater. Yeah, if it had been any smaller, it would have probably slipped through the net. Oh, no. We've got to put him back. He's got to go home. Say goodbye, everyone. Rescued many people, but never rescued a shark, so that's great. We've got a compound fracture in the bowl. Yeah! Wait, mate. I hate thieves down here, buddy. We hate them. Why? Go, go, go. Some people respond to being rescued in ways you just never imagined. <laughs> Look there. Look at it. 16-year-old Caitlin has been found face down in the water in between the northern set of flags. Are you hear me, Caitlin? Caitlin. 